Hello and welcome to part 18 of my Let's Play series of videos for Dwarf Fortress. I'm Sippy Cup. Hopefully you watched part 17. Uh, I basically spent that entire episode describing the complicated workings of the military system and I'm going to continue since I didn't quite get to finish going over all of the standing orders that I was talking about. So if you recall from last time, we were in the process of setting up a new alert that would basically um, tell our dwarves to defend a burrow. And if you recall, we defined a burrow as being this entire lower level where we have our dining room and our bedrooms. Basically, what I want this alert to do is basically, you know, let's say later in the game I get down to a cavern layer and I've got, you know, a, an opening in my fort deep down in the earth where scary things like troglodytes and cave crocodiles and whatnot can come inside. Well, if they manage to make it up in here, I want to have military standing by ready to engage them without having to pause the game and issue a direct order to go fight. So this just automates, you know, that that whole process. My guys, if it's the second something steps foot inside this burrow, they'll get wind of it, they'll immediately come and deal with a threat. And they'll chase him. They'll chase him away too. They'll pursue him. So, again, let's take a look at the burrow. Um, I actually I changed I redefined it a little bit to make sure that it covered all of this area up here. So there's the burrow. It's called Fort. We made that with the W key here. Define burrows. Now let's go back to the military screen and finish setting up this schedule. Or sorry, the alert. So that there was that alert that we set up. Protect Fort. Um, and we went to the schedule and we were getting ready to set the orders on this schedule. So I'm going to again use my asterisk and forward slash key to change between the different alerts until I have protect fort. I'm going to come over here to make sure I have the correct squad selected and I'm going to give an order with O. Now it looks like it's already selected my one burrow by default. I can cycle through these things here. So I, would, I just want to defend burrows. And again, I'm going to reduce the minimum soldiers to 8. And I'm going to hold down shift and press enter. And for some reason, that didn't stick. Let me figure out why. OK, sorry about that. I figured it out. Um, when I select defend burrows, you have to press enter to select the, um, the burrow. It wasn't automatically selected. This is just the list. If you had other burrows here, you'd be able to use um, you know, your arrow keys to cycle through the different ones. So anyway, this one is now selected. So in theory, if I press down Shift and Enter, it should now give the order. So there it is, Defend Burrows. Again, I'm just going to press C to copy it. And I'm going to go down the list and make it so this is a year-round deal. OK. So now I should have yet another alert on my squad screen that I can select for my squad. So here I just brought up my squad screen and press B to bring up my inky fed admirers squad. And I can change this now, the T, to protect fort. So if I resume, they should protect this area. So now if anything comes in here, they will immediately engage it. However, it's probably worth mentioning that they won't necessarily hang out down there. I think that they'll eventually make their way down there. Yeah. So here, yeah, they'll just kind of spread out in this area. There we go. Cool. So now they're all hanging out down here and protecting this area. That is the defend burrows command. Or defend burrows standing order, rather. Okay, we've already discussed training a little bit. Um, there's already a whole alert devoted to it, but you know, just to show you real quick how you would do it, um, you know, you would go into the military screen, you would go into alerts, you could create a new one called training. So I'll just go ahead and do it just for demo purposes. So C at alert, we'll name it training. Let's say maybe we want this one to be seasonal, um, where we want to do an on-off cycle of training and having no orders. So 
press enter. Um, we'll go ahead and go to schedule. Make sure we get the right one. There's training. Make sure we have the right squad. Now let's say we want to do a training schedule that's two months on, two months off. So they'll train for two months in a row and then they'll take a break and go back to their civilian duties. So when we would just go give order, we would cycle this to train. So, and then we would set the number of guys here. I'm going to make it eight. Press shift enter to be done. Now we can just copy this and paste it here. And then we'll skip two months, go down, do two more. Skip two months, go down two more. So now we've got a cycle here where they train for two months, take a two month break, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's one thing you can do. And actually this is a good strategy. There are ways that you can use civilian chores, civilian jobs to buff their combat ability. And one good example of that would be to use your dwarf therapist. So you'd use your dwarf fortress utility to come in here and you would give them, for instance, a pump auto operating skill. Then you would build some pumps, like a screw pump. Pump operating um, basically builds a, a huge amount of strength for your guys, for your troops. So what you could do is um, figure out which guys are in the militia, and it tells you all. It tells you here. It makes it easy for you to tell because uh, their name is going to be bolded. So you can see, okay, here is my crossbowman, and it still shows what their civilian labors are. So you could disable all of their labors except for pump operating, build some pumps, and then set the pumps to be operated manually. I can show you this more later. But then you basically have a pump gym where when they are not training, they go to their civilian role, and their only civilian labor is pump operating. So they're just working this pump manually and it's making them really strong and then after you know their two months are up on this schedule they go back onto active duty stronger than they were before they're on duty for two months and they go back and work work out in the pump gym some more and so there's other things you can do like that but yeah so let's get back to the game here so anyway so there's you know our on off training schedule the final thing that I have to show you about um, standing orders is patrol. A patrol is basically a way to link up multiple stations and have you guys go back and forth between them. So let's take a look at how you do that. Okay, so I've already got one station. If you recall, we used capital N to set a note for it. So let's get get that up. So that's where my guys are right now. I have them on the station alert so they are stationed here. So let's say I want to get them to patrol between this point and another point. So you know your scout comes in with a report that some groundhogs are setting up some improvised explosive devices to ambush the trade caravan. They do this all the time. Well the trade caravan tends to come from the same place. I don't remember exactly in this case but let's just pretend. Let's say it's somewhere over on the corner of the map, and I think this is about right. They usually come from somewhere here in the upper corner, for me. It'll probably vary for you. So we'll set a new note, and let's see, we'll place one here. Oops, I didn't mean to place that. Let's delete it. Yeah, when you press P, it places it at your cursor, so I'll place it right here. So there it is. Now I'm going to name it, uh, let's see, Caravan, and press Enter. Cool. So now, now what I have to do is create a route that they're going to patrol by pressing R. So I press R, I can add a route, and I'm going to edit the waypoints. So add waypoint, and first one will be caravan. Now if I come back over to my entrance, I can 
put my cursor over my entrance waypoint or my entrance point and press A to add that as a waypoint. So now I've got a route. I have the first point in my route as go to caravan and the second point in my route is go to entrance. And when they're done, and you can actually see here that there is here's the actual patrol route. It's made a line here between these two. So now I can actually name this. We'll call this caravan route. And I'll press enter. So there is my new route, caravan route. So this will this is my kind of estimated my best guess at the way that the caravan is going to come. So when I know that the caravan is about to be coming, I can set the alert to, you know, patrol this route. And you know, if there's any thieves or crazy animals that I'm worried about ambushing the caravan, my guards or my you know my militia here should deal with it. So let's show you how to now select this and make it into an alert. So now I can escape out of this. I can go back to my military menu. Um, I think I need to make. Let's go look at alerts. So I don't have an alert for the patrol yet. So let's make a new one. Press C to add a new alert. We'll call it patrol. Oops, that didn't didn't stick. Let's get to name it with Shift N. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we want patrol trade route. We we'll want just abbreviate it. Okay, now we go to schedule, and we make sure we get the right alert up here by cycling with asterisk and forward slash, I'm looking for a patrol trade route. Now I can come over here, make sure I have the right squad, press O to give order, press O to cycle through. Here's the patrol route, caravan route. Now I have to press enter to select it, I think. Okay, maybe it's just selected, I don't know. Subtract two guys, shift enter. There, okay, so it worked. I didn't actually have to select it for some reason, but so there's my patrol route. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then I'll paste it for all the months and escape out of here and now theoretically um, if I bring up the squad menu select my inky admirer, inky fed admirers I can change the, this active alert to patrol trade route and if I resume well, it's saving because I think the season just changed so let me pause for a sec. Okay, it got done saving, so let's resume the game and see if they start doing it. So there they go. They're off on their way to patrol the route. So there should be a minimum of eight of them patrolling at any given time. This guy's running around with the barrel for some odd reason. Dwarf Fortress and its exciting bugs. And so there you have it. So one last thing that I need to show you. Okay, the last thing I need to show you really quickly is what's called a civilian alert. This is basically a way that you can confine your civilians to a burrow that you've designated to be a safe place so that if your fortress comes under siege or there's just somewhere where you want them to go that's easily defensible, you can set that up. So basically, I've already got that fort burrow and that's a safe place. It's, you know, downstairs, it's protected. So now when I go to alerts and I want the protect fort so that when my guys are, you know, protecting the fort, all my civilians are in that safe area. Um, I can just press right arrow over here. Well, first I have to press enter to set this as a civilian, the civilian alert. And then I press a right arrow to come over here and set that as a safe place by pressing enter. So now you should see when I have this set over, um, the civilian alert has been is, is in place and the borough is designated as a safe place. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any outstanding questions about this episode or the one before, go ahead and post in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Thanks.